the City Commission meeting of November 2nd, 2015. And uh, the record should show that we have four commissioners present. Uh, first. Yes, uh, Mr. Jackson. See off of the agenda for this evening. It'll, it'll. Okay. Do we have any other changes or additions to the agenda? To approve the. So move. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 And the motion carries. Anything on the consent agenda that anybody discuss? I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Aye. Mr. Decker. Aye. Steiner. Aye. Chair votes aye. That motion carries. Our first uh, timetable agenda is not until 5. better? Oh, much better. Okay, we're looking at the first regular agenda item, which is uh, the South Park 3rd Edition Annexation, annexation Ordinance. Uh, Ms. Goss, you have an explanation for us? Yes, thank you. The city adopted Ordinance 1570, annexing a tract of land, which was then known as State Avenue South Park Edition. Um, when it was sent in re for recording, uh, there were errors in the legal description that were found, as well as the uh, land was actually uh, platted as South Park 3rd edition. So this changes, uh, this new ordinance just changes that legal description, um, including that it's South Park 3rd edition rather than State Avenue South Park edition. And the only other change is the area that is annexed includes the city right away, just so it matches um, the legal description on the plat. Okay, so will this be a new ordinance number, I assume? Yes, it will be Ordinance 1598. Okay, any questions from commissioners on this agenda item? Uh, it is, it will be the first reading of an ordinance, so we will ask if there's anybody from the public who would like to comment on this ordinance. You can come forward and do so. Any comments, uh, comments on this annexation ordinance? Okay, then we will close the public hearing. Um, any more comments from commissioners? Otherwise, we need a motion to approve the first reading. I'll we'll make the motion to approve first reading of ordinance 1598. And do we have a second? Second. Any more discussion on the motion? If not, we'll vote. Uh, Mr. Decker. Aye. Uh, Mr. Steiner. Aye. Mr. Oltman. Aye. Chair votes aye. That motion carries. Okay, we'll move on to item 4B, personnel recruitment ordinance. Ms. Goss. Thank you. This is the second reading of Ordinance 1597, which will allow the city to use recruitment agencies uh, to fill vacancies in exempt positions. Um, it will be especially helpful in filling the Deputy City Administrator and City Engineer position. There has been no changes since first reading, and city staff recommends approval. Okay, thank you. Any questions from commissioners? Second reading of the ordinance, we will again open it up to the public. If anybody has comments on proposed ordinance 1597, please come forward. At this time, there are no comments from the public. We'll close the public hearing and um, 
ask for action from commissioners. Mr. Chair, move yeah. to approve second reading of Ordinance 1597. Second it. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, uh, we will vote. Mr. Steiner. Aye. Mr. Oltman. Aye. Mr. Decker. Aye. Chair votes aye. That motion carries. Okay, we have a job description, a new job description for a computer technician. Ms. Nominick. Good evening, Mr. President, Commissioners. The computer technician position is a new position to the City of Dickinson and was approved with the 2016 budget. This position will provide support to the Information Technology Department um, with duties such as troubleshooting, solving technical issues of desktop, desktop top computers, laptops, tablets, those sort of things. Um, the position was, job description was scored and fell within the class and the grade um, that it was budgeted for. So um, it was taken to the Civil Service Commission and was approved by them. So city staff and, and Civil Service Commission have approved the position and we ask for your approval. Okay, any questions of Ms. Nominick, I think it um, said so in the job description, but who, who will the position report to? This will report to the IT coordinator. Okay. Um, I assume we simply need a motion to approve the job description. I would make that motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion at all on the motion? If not, Mr. Oltmans? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Decker? Aye. Chair votes aye. That motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Mrs. Nominick. Our next item is disposition of the Dakota Dinosaur Museum. Mr. Kessel. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Um, this is a document that has been presented to you in the past. Uh, when presented to you, you uh, asked that the specific language regarding the time frame uh, in which we sh could or should hire a uh, paleontologist or geologist or someone that fits the bill to curate the collection be extended uh, to March 31st of 2016. Uh, we did go back uh, to the leagues uh, with that request. Uh, they have granted that request and it has been updated and changed in the version that's before you. That is the only change that has been made to the document since it was uh, first presented and the agreement allows us to accept uh, the majority of the exhibits that uh, are in uh, the Dickinson, or excuse me, the Dakota Dinosaur Museum um, so that uh, we can continue operations uh, as we see fit. Uh, it does require that we not make material changes to the existing exhibits for the period of one year. Uh, so that transition time will be utilized in developing a good plan um, and then implemented uh, in the following year. So you're, you're not going to see a lot of changes in 16, but you may in 2017. So it'd be our recommendation to approve this evening with that change. Any questions for Mr. Kessel? <coughs> Mr. Kessel, I have one that I failed to ask you earlier today. Um, on the four listed items in item number two, that talks about hiring the full-time staff person. Uh, that last sentence, that the city shall provide a copy of the person's resume to the seller. That doesn't suggest that the seller will have a part in the hiring. It's just an information piece that we're going to provide the seller? That's correct. Um, we, we've had actually quite a few discussions about that process. They would like to provide some uh, input uh, into whomever we hire. As you can imagine, uh, this has been their life for sure. several decades, and so they're concerned about turning that over. And uh, we we retain final authority and decisions, but uh, it allows them to provide us some feedback and input. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Um, so we are at a point that we need to approve this agreement with the sellers. I would make that motion to approve the agreement. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion about this agreement? 
Okay. Not we will vote, Mr. Oldmans. Aye. Uh, Mr. Decker. Aye. Mr. Steiner. Aye. Chair votes aye. That motion carries. Mr. Kessel, we have a special assessment commission appointment. Yes, uh, before you we have an interest, uh, citizen's uh, interest form that was completed by Mr. John Rieger. Uh, Mr. Rieger is an insurance agent in town uh, and he indicated an interest in both the Planning and Zoning Commission and the Special Assessment Commission. I did meet with Mr. Rieger. We discussed the options that were available uh, and it became apparent that the Special Assessment Commission is probably the, the best fit for his background and his interests. I had a conversation with Chairman Bleth today to ask him uh, when he would like his resignation to be active and he said yesterday. So um, what I'm recommending is that um, if you're amenable to appointing Mr. Rieger, that it be done uh, based on uh, an effective date of tomorrow. Uh, and Mr. Bleth will have his resignation will be effective today because he'd be taking over Mr. Bleth's term of office, whatever is remaining. Okay, would that then leave us with three individuals we have a full commission with this appointment at five. Okay, and this brings us to the five? This, this would bring us to the five, okay. yes. Okay, any other questions? Mr. Chair, I would move we appoint Mr. Rieger okay, to the Special Assessment Commission. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second for the appointment. Any other, any other discussion on the motion? That will vote, Mr. Steiner. Aye. Mr. Oatmans. Aye. Mr. Decker. Aye. Chair votes aye. That motion carries. Uh, Mr. Kessel, go ahead. Thank you. I have two reports for you this evening. The first one is a safety, a quarterly safety report. Um, as you can uh, see by the report that's uh, in front of you, we had 16 employee injuries uh, within the third quarter of 2015. Five of those required medical attention. Brings our mid-year total to 32 with 13 requiring medical attention. If you look at the, um, the graphs that were provided, you can see that uh, as you would imagine that the police department, solid waste and buildings and sites uh, have the majority of those injuries. Uh, those tend to be our higher staff environments uh, in terms of just sheer quantity uh, of staff members. Um, you know, the uh, fact that we have that many injuries is still concerning even if they are without medical uh, treatment necessary. Um, so we'll continue to f try to focus on safety issues. Um, Mr. Sivak uh, still chairs that group uh, and put this report together for you today. Um, so it, it remains a, a focus for us. Um, and unfortunately, we haven't seen a lot of, of decline yet. Uh, we certainly planning for uh, and hoping for uh, a decline in, in future months. I would suppose that there is some seasonality to these numbers? Correct. And I, that is one piece, you know, that we can bring to the table uh, at maybe at the next commission meeting so that you can look at last year's data uh, as opposed to just simply seeing a trend report for this year's data. That might be good. Yeah. I know that, that we had several injuries last year, but I, I can't tell you if, if we're down. I would suspect that we are, but I can't tell you that with surety. Okay. Anything for Mr. Kessel on the safety report? Go ahead, Mr. Kessel. Okay, the next item is uh, um, this the succession sequence for the city commission position that Mr. Johnson vacated. Uh, we started the clock ticking on the 15-day window uh, that allows citizens to submit a petition for a special election. That window started yesterday, November 1st. Uh, in order to do that, uh, we have to have a petition uh, in hand within 15 days uh, that has at least 116 qualified um, electors within the city of Dickinson. Um, it's interesting to note, I had a conversation with, with or, or an email exchange with Kay Haig uh, from the county because we have a MOU that they run our special elections on our behalf. And the time frame would require a 30-day window for those people who are, in, if a special election is, uh, is petitioned for, there'd be a 30-day window to allow anybody interested to obtain 
signatures to be to uh, be on the ballot and then another 64 days is required for uh, a notice period for the city to give to the county so that they can prepare for a special election so that means that there'd be a, a at a minimum a 94 day window that would be required uh, before an election could take place um, th that to me was an interesting statistic considering that the election uh, would actually happen in June so we'd be looking at seating somebody in probably February if we went down the road of a special election process so I just wanted to make sure that 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 was clear uh, to the Commission because that is an option for you as well even if the electors or the uh, residents of Dickinson don't choose that it's still on the table for you to choose if you if you wanted to um, as we are here today uh, Commissioner Jackson is chairing our meeting in his role as the vice president of the um, City Commission uh, November 15th will be the final day of the 15 uh, and if we do not have a petition um, then the City Commission has three options available to it um, you can hold a special election as we just discussed uh, you can appoint uh, a new president uh, or you can uh, opt to go with four people on the commission until the next election if you choose to uh, appoint a new president um, then or excuse me if you choose not to then the vice president of the commission um, would continue in, in uh, or could continue in, in their role um, if you decide to uh, appoint a new president the nominations from commissions are made those don't require a second uh, you can simply nominate yourself or somebody else from the Commission this the Commission then would take a vote in the order of the nominations uh, so whoever was nominated first you take a vote on that individual uh, and then you would go down the list until there was finally a majority of uh, voters uh, uh, for one uh, person uh, the new president would then be sworn in and assume their duties uh, immediately uh, and they would serve out the remaining term of the president so uh, that means that their term would end in June of 2016 um, then you would have another vacancy on the Commission to fill whomever would uh, assume that role as president uh, so you you again have the same process available we wait another 15 days for the city uh, residents to to submit a, a petition if they want to move forward with a special election and if not you then have the same options you can appoint or you can choose not to appoint um, I think it's important that you decide if you want to go down the road of appointment that you kind of lay out um, that for the for the populace so that uh, people can that are interested in that appointment can um, submit their names um, and also that you can discuss a process by which you want to appoint is because um, that that is up to you uh, however you want to decide that process and in my memo I mentioned that just some pretty obvious options uh, in terms of uh, we accept an application for the position uh, and then we can submit them all to the City Commission and you simply um, make nominations you take the votes until you find a majority the others you could actually accept applications and maybe do an interview process uh, of those people who have submitted um, applications you could do a, an application process develop a short list determine uh, based upon how many people may have submitted an interest if you have 12 15 or more if this might be an option so that uh, interviews don't take quite as long now the difficulty with that of course is how you go about developing a short list uh, that would be a, a process you'd also have to discuss um, and then you obviously could do a, a process um, of interviews that would include the public in some way uh, those are simply four that came to mind uh, as, as I was putting the memo together but that the whole appointment process is completely dictated by your desires and, and how you'd like to move forward I'm simply suggesting that it, it might be of interest for anybody who is interested in applying that they know what that process is beforehand so, um, that would mean that a November 17th making making an assumption that you've appointed somebody on the November 16th meeting uh, that that would begin the next 15 day period uh, we then have to wait until December 1st which would then be the last of the 15 days assuming that an election is not uh, required um, 
then at the December 7th meeting is when the new president um, could, could chair the, the commission meeting. So I, unless there's questions, I guess um, I, I've tried to lay it out for you as best I uh, can. Uh, the, the dates are within the memo itself. Um, and I, I ask what your, what your thoughts are in regards to the appointment process. <coughs> well, I, I think it's laid out well. But there are really are a number of successive events that have to occur here. And I think it would be wrong of us to get too far ahead of ourselves right now. We need to take this a step at a time. <coughs> We're beginning this 15-day period. What I do think the public would be interested in, we have no action to take tonight. But there are a couple things that I, I think the public would be interested in our feelings if we care to give them. And one being just the basic question of going forward with a five-person commission. Because we do have the option of going forward with just four. And myself, I, I really hope we do end up at five, regardless of, of the who or how we do this. And I, I don't know, do the rest of you have feelings about that? Yeah, I feel pretty strongly about that. I think that at times, um, some of us end up with conflicts of interest. That leaves three of us make the decision if there's one person that has a conflict. Um, I just think when it comes down to breaking a tie of votes, five is an important number to have. And I think if we want to best represent the community and the direction that they want to go, I think that's the best way for us to do it as well. I, I would agree. Uh, I'd like to get someone on the board as soon as we can in, in whatever position it is uh, to at least get them four to six months of experience before the next election if they intended to run again. Um, and that would be one of the considerations that I would go give for anybody that wants to sit on the board is, you know, I would weigh that pretty heavy that they intend to run again in June so we know that there's more of a than a six-month commitment, I guess, to the city. I agree, too. We, we need five people on this commission. Um, I did have one question. If there is a special election called for by the public, and we convene a <coughs> special election, say it's February or whatever time frame, that person would only serve out till June, right? They, they would, um, d depending upon how you, you deal with the appointment of the president. So if, if you make an appointment to president from amongst the four of you, then uh, that individual serves out the term of um, president, former President Johnson. So they would only be seated until June. Right. The, the, then that opens up the um, whomever that would be, and it would be completely dependent upon who that president is, the person um, who would be appointed or elected would fill out the term of that uh, individual. <coughs> So, right. uh, you know, it but I'm saying if they if they call for a special election for mayor, for the the president position, oh, then they would serve out just the that just till June. That's and then correct. You have to run for re-election again in June. Correct. Okay. That's correct. That would mean also that we wouldn't have our fifth person on the board until after the first of the year. Well, after the right. first of the year. Right. Yeah. Probably the middle right. to end of February. Yeah. Oh, but I, I think we need five on the board, and I think there's going to be. A good list of possible candidates out there that will step forward to serve the community. Yeah. <coughs> I, you know, I understand that we'll have discussion, possibly, when we ultimately choose a commissioner. But for now, I think we need to keep the focus on the next couple of steps, and that is having this 15-day period over, and then the actions that we would take on November 15th or 16th. I guess it's sixteen. Appointing a president. <coughs> Any more questions or discussions for now? Otherwise, I, I think that's all we need to. 
be aware of at this time. Okay. Let's see, Mr. Kessel, anything else in the way of reports? I, I don't. Uh, thank you. Okay, let's see here. Um, let's try to do our first engineering item, the minimum payment policy, uh, policy for right-of-way acquisition. Mr. Kubis. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Commissioners, uh, before you use a resolution to create a minimum payment policy, um, when a small par parcel of land is needed for city infrastructure projects, the market value of that property can be quite low, um, not due to its value, but due to the size of the parcel. City staff are recommending this minimum payment policy to set a floor for those lump sum acquisitions of individual parcels that need to be acquired as either fee title right away, uh, a permanent easement, or a temporary construction easement. Also included in your packet uh, were the mem memo memorandums of offer and appraisal waiver forms that the city has and will use in the future for minimum payment acquisitions. City staff recommend approval of this minimum payment policy. I'd open it up to any questions you may have. Questions for Mr. Kubis? You know, I know that from time to time there can be a scenario where someone simply wants to donate right of way. Will this preclude that? It, it wouldn't. Uh, really, the first step in this policy uh, might just be the, the recognition that this is a small parcel and it may invoke this minimum payment policy. Um, but the, the first thing that needs to happen, if it is to be a minimum payment policy, um, is they would have to waive their right to an appraisal, which um, would be the the form that was in the packet, the notification and appraisal waiver. And as a part of that, I believe one of the items that you can, or, or one of the, the selections you can make as a, as a property owner would be to waive that right to an appraisal and to waive our right to compensation also. The, the very first off. Yep. yep. Okay. So while it wouldn't be a part of the minimum payment policy, it, it is an option that the, the property owners always have. We strongly encourage it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Questions for Mr. Kubis on the policy? I think it will make life a little easier as we enter some of these projects. Um, resolution number, Ms. Goss? Uh, it's 44. 44 2015. Okay. We need a. Uh, motion to approve that resolution. Mr. Chair, move to approve resolution number 44-2015. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, uh, Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Decker? Aye. Mr. Oatman? Aye. Chair votes aye. The motion carries. We will call it 5 o'clock. We have a 5 o'clock item on the uh, timetable agenda, agenda that Mr. Hadley is going to handle for us. Yes, thank you, Mr. Jackson. Um, this would be Ordinance uh, 1599, I believe. It's the Stark County Park Board PUD application for the fairgrounds. Um, this application has 21 listed conditions that came through the Planning Commission uh, to mitigate any, any off-site um, issues that might occur. Um, there's some additional requirements that will need to be submitted to the planning department prior to the second reading. This is the first reading of this item. Um, so they said Ordinance 1599 staff would recommend that we approve this application as presented. Okay, Mr. Hadley, I don't think you said, but the rezoning is from AG to PUD, correct? AG to Planning and Development, yes. Okay. okay, any questions from commissioners? Any questions of Mr. Hadley? Just give the public a general idea of where the location of this is. Um, yes, it's an 80, approximately 87 acre parcel, uh, section 27, township 139, range 96, uh, just off of State Highway 22, south of town. And yeah. we'd be about one mile south of the old uh, Steffes Church Furniture Plant, I believe. Does that sound right? Bottom mile. On the east side of the road. East side of the highway. Yeah. 
Okay, any other questions from commissioners? Uh, this is an ordinance, it is a public hearing, so we'll ask the public if anybody has any comments on the first reading of Ordinance 1599, rezoning for the County Park Board. Anybody from the public have any comments? If not, we'll close the public hearing and look for a motion. A motion to approve Ordinance 1599, first reading. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any, any discussion on the motion? Not we'll vote, Mr. Oltmans. Aye. Mr. Steiner. Aye. Mr. Decker. Aye. Chair votes aye. That motion carries. Let's um, let's jump back down to engineering, I guess. And Mr. Kubis will at least start this discussion on the uh, lighting project. Thank you, Mr. Jackson, commissioners. Uh, the, f the first item we have under special improvement districts is the, the Cook Meadow Hills Country Oaks second edition lighting special improvement district. Uh, you had seen an engineering report in the past. Uh, we brought it forward just for some comments uh, from the commission, mainly on, on the types of materials we were going to use. Um, we've, we've since revised the report to include only a, a concrete light pole option. I was just talking to uh, some of you before the meeting that if, if any of you would like to go see what these new concrete poles look like, uh, the city has installed a few of these. Uh, I shouldn't say the city. Uh, a developer has installed a few of these in the city on 5th Avenue East, north of 14th Street. Uh, there's only four or five poles on that short block. But you can go see. It would be the same pole, the same lights. Um, so you can take a first-hand look for yourself. Um, so th this, this project uh, would be a special improvement district for lighting within Cook Meadow Hills, first through the fourth edition, and the Country Oaks Estates, or a portion of the Country Oaks Estates second edition. Uh, the exact boundary is in the attached uh, preliminary engineering report that you all have in your packet. Um, I would add that uh, I've passed out to you uh, a slightly revised cost estimate from the one that was in the packet. Uh, the, the new dollar amount is, is for total project costs, $1,357,905. Uh, it, it generally works out to the same 22 cent per square foot assessment cost um, that was in the pack that you had, but it, it has adjusted some unit prices. So um, I guess the, the, the next step on this would be if, if we agree with this in concept, uh, we would need to, as staff, prepare a resolution creating this district, uh, formalizing that district, which would kick off the 30-day the uh, protest period for, for this lighting district. So uh, with that, I would open it up to any questions you might have. So tonight our action would be to on only be to um, accept the engineering report. That would be that correct. correct? The, the, the next step would be to formally create the, the resolution okay. creating the district. And the, um, the figures we're seeing tonight, Mr. Kubis, are not necessarily the final figures that will be assessed against the property. They're probably very close. We, we hope they're close, but this is a, an, an estimate of the cost of the project. Um, so if, if a district is created, those, those landowners have the ability to look at this cost too and and have that way in their decision to either protest or not protest the sure. project. Okay. Other questions of Mr. Kubis? I think one important thing to point out is that this was one of the first areas developed a few years ago as the Bakken play really developed. Today, in a subdivision, the developer would be putting those that lighting in up front, correct? Yeah. In, in fact, right in this area of town, uh, we have a, a new subdivision that is is lit already. Um, but so, so the difference would be that the cost of the lighting in those cases are probably included in the cost of the lots. I, I would assume that's how the the developer is is in essence assessing the the, the cost of the lighting that. The developer's now bearing uh, those costs are, are rolled into your lot cost, correct? Okay. And did you tell us, and did I miss it, uh, the time period for repayment of specials? 
I, I did not mention it. Uh, I think that there's there's discretion of the commission, but historically on residential assessments, we've done a 10-year assessment period. Any more questions? Okay, if not, we need a motion approving the engineer's report for make, this project. And make the motion to approve the engineer's report. Second. Second. Okay, we have the motion second. Any further discussion? If not, we will vote, Mr. Decker. Aye. Mr. Steiner. Aye. Mr. Oatman. Aye. Chair votes aye. The motion carries. Okay, we'll go back to the timetable agenda. We have do, Mr. Chair, do we just need discussion for the books that, to instruct staff to proceed with the improvement district to set up the improvement district? Okay, I think that's happening. That's that's the direction I'm taking from this. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. Um, let's see. Five o five. Timetable agenda item, Project Better Life. Uh, Pastor Metamy. Hello, Commissioner. Hi, everybody. Uh, Welcome. My name is uh, Pastor John Amedomi, and I represent Global Mission for Jesus Christ Ministry and Project Better Life. It's, by, it's a blessing, and I'm living in this city. And I just want to thank you for the excellent job you are doing and leadership. I want to thank all the police and the firefighter, all the city worker. And it's amazing when I came to this city. I don't never have an idea. I never heard about city of Dickinson, but I know God's hand is upon the life of this city and upon all your life and your family. And I didn't take lightly. Even though I have a project, I'm or, usually original from West Africa, Togo, the city of Lome, where I live in this country for 26 years. I never see something like that. It's amazing to see this city growing day by day. All leadership, there's no crime, everything goes perfectly. And I just want to do something. God touched my heart. And I'm going to present this hour, hour of excellence and leadership for all the city worker of the commissionary and I go to present that to you today. Even though the project Better Life I have and to do something for Africa, we see poverty and uh, we see famine. I just dedicate myself to do something. And I'll, I'm, I'll be working three jobs to raise money for this project. So I just want to thank you. I didn't take lightly to live in this city. I just want to do something just to thank you. And this city is going to be an example for a lot of cities in this United States and in Africa and everywhere in this world. And things are going perfectly. So I just want to thank you. Pastor, thank you very much. Thank you very much. This doesn't happen to us very often. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's very nice. And especially on behalf of our staff. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Mr. Kessel. I'll find a great place for it. Very nice. Thank, Thank you. And you're welcome back anytime. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we have a 510 timetable agenda item, which is a public hearing um, on support for the Domestic Violence, Rape, and Abuse Crisis Center. Mr. Kessel, you're going to introduce this for us? I will briefly, and then I'd like to turn it over. We have three representatives today from the Domestic uh, Violence uh, and Rape and Abuse Crisis Shelter, but there is a resolution that was part of your packet. Uh, that was based upon a support uh, f that was requested by the Domestic Violence um, and Rape and Crisis Center. You guys really need to shorten that title a little bit. Um, but they, they came to us asking for a, a million dollars of, of support specifically. 
to kick off their campaign and to support the uh, application that they have to make in a, in a very short period of time to the state for grant funds. Uh, and they have a, a, a local match that, um, that's required, and this would meet that mo local match and indicate to the state how supportive that the city of Dickinson is to make sure that these types of services remain in our community. Um, so with that, the, the resolution itself does support that million dollars um, over the course of a, a three-year period. Uh, it does allow us to purchase their existing facility uh, so that that facility doesn't become an operational burden for them once their new one is opened. And we have Rhonda Ducart, Rita Annan, and Darianne Johnson in the audience today that, that maybe can speak to this topic better than I. Or maybe not. <laughs> you, you, you look indecisive. Today. I guess I was voted to be the one to speak. <laughs> I'll stand by you for moral support. <laughs> would you like me to answer questions, or how? Uh, what would you like me to? Could you just explain? maybe give an idea of, of uh, again, uh, not the whole audience, um, not just who's here today, but who's watching on TV, might be interested to know uh, what just a brief synopsis of the project itself. And you maybe should start by telling us who you are. <laughs> I am Darianne Johnson and I am the Executive Director of the Domestic Violence and Rape Crisis Center. We can shorten to DVRCC if you'd rather. <coughs> Thank you. All right. And I'm Rhonda Ducart. I'm a board member for DVRCC. And I'm Rita <coughs> Ennen and I'm d uh, the President of the Board for DVRCC. Thank you for being here. And maybe just to give you a little bit of history um, as to how this all came about. We were donated land by CHI, St. Joseph's Hospital in order to have a location for a new domestic violence shelter. During the last legislative session, the legislature did allow for a million dollars, or two million dollars, I'm sorry, for Williston, Minot, and Dickinson to build shelters. That is a, on a competitive basis, so we all have grants due December 1st. And in that grant, we have to show that we have the backing of the community and the city of Dickinson and our counties that surround us, as well as the community. And it, the grant is scored. So if you are not strong in one area, you will get less of a score. Um, I'm kind of a perfectionist, so I'm, <laughs> I'm working very hard to try and make this dream a reality. It truly is something that the board and I have been working on for the past two years, and everything really fell into place within about two months. So we are really scrambling, working very hard to, to make this all work. And I'm open to answering any questions or... Ms. Johnson, what is the total cost of your project going to be? The total cost of the shelter itself is about $4 million. That does not include the land which has been donated by St. Joseph's Hospital. Okay, thank you. And Mr. And Kessel, what is the purchase price of the... Has that been established? We haven't established. We'd have to do an appraisal uh, of their existing facility and... Um, they, of course, would need to operate that until they could uh, move into their others. So that, that may be a two-year uh, process uh, down the road. Is our intention to sell that, turn around and sell that, or keep it for employee housing? Um, we would have both options available to us. We could sell that uh, on the open market, um, or we could use it for uh, employee housing or for other services. We currently own a home just north of this building that we have staff in uh, and they're operating out of. So uh, I, I personally have not yet been inside that facility, so I, I'm, it's hard for me to give you a judgment on which it would work best for. Personally, I think this is a project that uh, you know, I'm definitely going to get behind and so on. I'd encourage the rest of the board. Uh, they're looking for a commitment from the community. I, I've talked to a lot of people about this commitment that we want to make tonight. And uh, everybody is in favor of it. Some are uh, sad that it's come to this point. They hope it's a very quiet building, but uh, nonetheless, it's, it's what happens, and uh, you have my full support. Thank you. I think, Mr. Kessel, the way the resolution is worded, um, 
first of all, that the net donation, whether we purchase the present building or not, will be the one million dollars. Correct. And then the purchase of the building is an optional thing. That's something that you and staff will work out with the center. That's our intent. That's correct. And Ms. Johnson, I don't think you said it. I know, I know the answer to this, but some listening tonight may not. But the, the property donated by St. Joseph's Hospital is near the new hospital. Is that correct? Correct. I have an additional question, if I may. Um, could you talk a little bit about the types of services that you offer today and the types of services that you'll be able to offer in a new structure and how many people you're serving today as opposed to what you Absolutely. could serve in the future? Right now, hmm. basically what we are in right now is a house. In that house, we shelter 18 women and children. Um, we are looking to raise the number of beds to 30. We are also trying to make the shelter a place where each family will have their own living space. So what by that I mean they will all have their own bedroom. There will still be common areas such as kitchen, dining room. Um, our, I think what our staff is most excited about, and me as well, is to have a playroom as big as we can possibly make it because we've always felt that the children are the ones that have been slighted because in the shelter that we're in currently, the playroom is about the size of the middle area of your desk. So we're looking to try and um, just try and make it a better place for the people that need it. We are being asked now to serve human trafficking victims because there is no place else them to be. Um, we will also be um, providing services and have provided services in the past to men who are in domestic violence situations and now we will be able to house them as well. We are also um, and have in the past working with the LGBT community because they also um, there's also violence in those relationships as well. So we we are being asked by our grantors to do more and more, which also um, makes our numbers go up because we just, we're trying to do everything we can for the people that are experiencing violence and our numbers are showing that. When you talk about the community involvement, didn't Oreo Animal Rescue just do kind of a unique fundraiser too? Can you explain how that kind of pulls into this as well? That is another thing that we are being asked to do by our grantors, and that is to house animals of victims of domestic violence. And it's always been a huge issue. It's just come to the forefront more now than it ever has before. Um, I have taken many calls. As I think I've told you before, I've been there 14 years, and women have chosen to stay in their domestic violence situation because they did not want their animals to be killed. And we have had no place um, to put them in our current shelter. Our vets have been fantastic in housing them when they could, but at the new shelter we will actually have one garage set aside specifically for smaller animals. We can't take elephants or giraffes, but <laughs> dogs, cats, those kinds of things, we will have room for. It's amazing. Just for the listening public, we don't allow giraffes or, or Good. elephants Good. in the city. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have horses either, and that has been, believe it or not, a huge issue. It has. Other questions from commissioners? Okay, Ms. Goss, this is 45-2015. That's correct. Okay. This is a public hearing. Anything else, ladies? Okay. No, just to th say thank you very much for all of your support. Um, I can't even tell you how much I appreciate all of you backing us on this. Well, we appreciate what all of you do too. Um, this is a public hearing. I'm going to ask if there's anybody from the audience tonight that wishes to speak concerning this issue. Please come forward now and address the commission. Anybody in the audience want to speak about the proposed center? Please come forward. Pertaining to what? The 
the proposed center. Okay, I see nobody that wants to partake in the public hearing, so we'll close the public hearing. And uh, commissioners, you have a you have a resolution. Um, are we looking at the resolution, Mr. Kessel? As it? Yes, um, the you received. A, I believe you received an update uh, of the resolution that changed just a couple words. Um, uh, if not in the well, maybe you have not. In the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, eighth, whereas, uh, it says that we have held two public hearings. That was incorrect. Uh, this is our first and only public hearing. We did have comments uh, made at a previous city commission meeting, but it wasn't an actually a public hearing. And then in the last page, uh, number three, um, the first line there after the comma of Domestic Violence and Rape Crisis Center, uh, it says and slash or rather than just or. Those are the only two uh, revisions that have been made to the uh, resolution that you have before you. Okay. Any questions about those changes? If not, uh, we're looking for a motion for I the would, support of the project. Yeah, I would make a motion to approve um, resolution 45. Do so have a second? We have a motion and a second. Any, any more discussion from commissioners? If not, we will vote Mr. Oltmans. Aye. Uh, Mr. Steiner. Aye. Mr. Decker. Aye. Chair votes aye. The motion carries. Thank you very much, ladies. Okay. We will go back to the regular agenda. And I think we're in engineering item number two with another improvement district, Mr. Kubis. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Commissioners, uh, before you, the second item we have under the Special Improvement Districts is the Fishers East Side Street Improvement District. Uh, this SID would complete the streets on 15th Avenue East and 16th Avenue East, north of the East Business Loop. Per the direction of the Special Assessment Commission, uh, the district will now include only properties south of Carroll Street. If, if this commission remembers, we'd brought this forward for I'd say informational purposes uh, a couple of months ago, and uh, we had a couple options on how to uh, how to assess this project, uh, a couple different district options, and uh, we also brought that forward to the special assessment commission uh, probably six weeks ago. And th their their recommendation was to not assess the property north of Carroll Street, which had been previously assessed through our development impact fee program a couple of years. ago. This district would also exclude Lot 1, Block 1, which was originally included in the draft preliminary engineering report, but was removed um, because the uh, storm sewer improvements along Carroll Street were also removed. That was the only benefit that that property would have been receiving. So uh, before you is, is the district um, in, the special, in the preliminary engineering report to create or not create, uh, to finish the paving improvements for the Fishers East Side second uh, subdivision. Again, similar to the Cook Lighting project, uh, if this report is, is acceptable, staff will move forward with creating a resolution to formally create the improvement district. With that, I'd open it up to any questions. Questions for Mr. Kubis? Uh, lot one, block one. We just have a, uh, a geo map here I don't have the actual sorry lot, lot one block one was uh the the very easternmost lot there it's the autorama property now okay uh, the there's no streets being improved along that that property anymore there was a storm sewer component to the project which has been removed so that property was removed from the district okay thank you Again, our, our actions tonight will be simply to approve the engineering report. Um, any other questions? If not, we're looking for a motion to approve the report. I make the motion to approve the engineering report for the Fisher East Side Special District. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Now we will vote. Uh, Mr. Decker. Aye. Mr. Steiner. Aye. Mr. Oltmans. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. 
Anything else, Mr. Kubis? Uh, one item that we were hoping to have on the agenda today, uh, we, we removed it, but we plan to have it on the 16th as, as an update, again, on the, the State Avenue Bridge Project. As they move into to their winter shutdown period, uh, they'd ask to come in and, and give another presentation to the commission and to the community on where they're at and their schedule in the upcoming construction season. So um, you can plan on that. And, and I think at that meeting as well, we'd have an update on, on a recap of our, our year's projects. Everything's kind of winding up right now. Uh, looks like we'll have some decent weather to, to finish the little paving that we have left on our on our city street projects. So we'll have an update for you on the 16th, uh, kind of a recap and a summary of the construction projects and maybe a little sneak peek at next year's projects as well. So. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gubis. We will move to Public Works. Um, Mr. Zeroff, you have a change order you'd like to show us. Good evening, President Jackson and Commission. Um, I do have a change order for your consideration this evening. It is a change order with the West Pump Station and Force Main Project. This is a change order for the mechanical uh, contract with Williams um, Plumbing and Heating. Uh, the change order is for an additional horsepower and some duct work. Uh, because of the structural loads on the building and the uh, increase is for $4,356 um, and uh, uh, recommend approval. Okay, any questions for Mr. Zeroff? Not, we're looking for a motion to approve the change order. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I will vote, Mr. Steiner. Aye. Mr. Oatmans. Aye. Mr. Decker. Aye. The chair votes aye. Motion carries. Anything else, Mr. Zura? Um, I do have a little presentation this evening. Okay. So I don't know if we need some lights or something. Walter. As, as uh, Engineer Kubis said, next week he's going to give an update on s some projects uh, because of the short. Uh, Agenda this evening, I thought it would be worthwhile uh, to show the public and commission uh, just some pictures of the projects I had, and uh, I'll go through these quick. And if you have any questions on a specific project, I can sure uh, get into the details if you wish, but I uh, thought I'd start out with, with these general pictures. Um, th this is just the exterior facing of the finished water pump station on Broadway. Um, it's, uh, of course, a combination project between Southwest Water and the city of Dickinson. Um, we were just in there and I just wanted to show some of the new uh, high service pumps of this of this project. Um, they are running now um, and uh, they're finishing painting on that project but uh, I thought some of these might be of interest to like I said you and the in the in the public. Uh, there's another picture of just some of the controls. We are working uh, and fabricating the RTUs uh, for the city side of the SCADA system on that, on that uh, finished water pump station project. Um, West Gravity Phase 2 project, uh, you probably see it on uh, exit uh, 59. Um, this is kind of the, the, this is the route that they're going on that project. Uh, you see it by the interstate, there's some boreholes. There's five, five bores on this project. Um, so it, it might seem like they've been a long time putting in pipe, but the, the bores do uh, take some time. This is just a bore pit uh, on the, looks like the north side of the interstate. Uh, and there's a, just a picture of the jack and bore. Uh, uh, one of them that's, uh, uh, I don't know if that's one going on the interstate or not, but um, that's a picture of a, a bore machine. Uh, List station five is just getting started. That's on Fifth Street. Um, uh, I don't know how deep that is, probably 30, 25 feet deep. Um, and they're starting to put the first uh, section on that project. That, like I said, that project's just getting started, maybe six, seven percent complete for the lift station five project. Uh, and there they're putting another section on. Uh, the West One Million Gallon Tank, uh, it's been an interesting picture, and I, I think actually Jerry from the engineering office sent me this picture, but that a real interesting of the uh, uh, a person uh, finishing the welding on some of that tank, um, as you can see in that picture. Uh, there it is with the, 
completed welding of the tank. Um, there I was out there and they were putting the, the logo uh, finishing touches on the tank. And then there's an aerial of the, of the new tank. That, uh, next week they'll be disinfecting that and starting to fill uh, the tank. Uh, so hopefully uh, that'll be online soon. Uh, the Bryant facility, which is going uh, at the Public Works building, you can see it on the south portion of the Public Works facility. Um, there are just some pictures of the, the walls being built and then some of the sheeting being done. Um, another picture of the aerial. Uh, there's some of the, uh, actually they're just starting to put on some of the outside uh, siding uh, this week, which it doesn't show in this picture. Uh, and uh, hopefully completion is real soon on that. Our, our Brian machine will be coming, I think, next week and hopefully have it in operation within two weeks. Uh, th this is one thing I wanted to show from, from this area. You can see the area to the, to the left there, the big arrow. Uh, that's just the application area, the city-owned property uh, that our biosolids application that we apply the biosolids to at the water reclamation facility. Uh, this is all a new process for us. So I just wanted to show our biosolids applicator. Uh, it's the big big tank uh, and, and we just received it probably a month or so ago and we're putting it in operation as we speak. Um, there's another picture of the, the tank itself. We just leased the tractor, um, which uh, is is definitely the way to go. It's It's very, small dollars to lease a tractor, but we did, we did of course, purchase the uh, tank and the applicator. Uh, there it is out at our water reclamation facility uh, filling up from our biosolids tanks. And then there's a picture of it injecting into the uh, property that I showed you previously. Of course, that has a certain application rate uh, approved by EPA and Department of Health. Uh, and uh, uh, now that we're in that routine, I think we're gonna apply it in the fall and in the spring. Uh, we have our new SCADA control uh, screens at, a, at our uh, water utilities area of our, our public works facility. just want to show you there. Uh, the one on the left is our water SCADA. The one on the right is our uh, sewer. Um, it just has each facility. Uh, uh, you can see some of the, on the left, the meter pits from DPR and South Heart, and then the rest are our lift stations. Uh, there you can see some of the, the tanks we have throughout town. Uh, we do have to add um, the finished water pump station, and then we'll be adding the booster uh, stations, the River State Avenue and the River Drive booster uh, to the system. Uh, there's just one of the screens on our uh, lift station. Uh, you can see the different uh, control capabilities on the left. Uh, it shows you levels and trends and uh, uh, you can remote turn on, turn off uh, the systems on all these uh, structures. Then I just, I, that was out today, I think for one of the first times, it's our new high speed vacuum uh, that's out. Um, wanted to remind the public that they can call the Public Works at 456-7979 uh, for uh, picking up uh, leaves. Uh, this isn't our leaf picker, but it's a new tool for our arsenal. It's a high-speed vacuum sweeper that uh, I talked to the guys today out running it and they said it's been working real well. It's got some high uh, vacuum um, and it's working well. So uh, that's all I have. Any questions on any of those? Any questions for Mr. Zuroff? Well, Mother Nature has been good to you guys and to our contractors this fall. Getting lots done. Thanks very much. Mr. Thank you. Zero. Okay, that completes our regular agenda. Anything that any commissioners have that they want to bring to the meeting? I do, Chairman Jackson. I know I'm not a commissioner, but I would like to uh, request, um, as, as uh, Mr. Zeroff's presentation uh, has shown, we've, we have a lot of vertical and other uh, improvements that we've been making in the community and we've tried to show you those on occasion with tours um, but there's some other things we'd like to show you uh, in terms of uh, our overlay districts that that you can see and, and the impact that they've had on communities that you don't often get uh, to, to see in a tour and we'd like to do that 
Uh, I would suggest uh, if you're available on the 16th prior to our next City Commission agenda uh, that we meet uh, here at City Hall at, at 2 o'clock and we would just simply do a driving tour. We won't uh, uh, most likely not exit the, the van, but we'd like to show you those things uh, just so you can see for yourself some of the other improvements that we've been making in the community. So if, they, if that works into your schedules, um, I'd suggest just meeting here at City Hall at 2 p.m. Uh, and then doing a driving tour. Works for everybody. Do what I can do. Yeah, send us a notice. We'll certainly yeah. do that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, nothing from commissioners. Anybody from the public that would like to address the commission on any topic this evening? Anybody from the public? Okay. If not, we will look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. <laughs>